you doing? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Did you hear all of the stuff about the, you know that we are coming close to the 1,000 on the YouTube? You know, I think that Thomas and <laughs> and some other folks really just move our our level up. You know, I'm surprised, but that's just we have the target for 1,000 at the end of June. I think we will reach it. So it's just we can uh, we can we can yeah, yeah, so yeah. something to celebrate. <laughs> Fantastic. So to talking, about, talking about that, let me put on your top right corner this beautiful QR code to subscribe. Scan go to our channel, the Bean Cafe in YouTube. Also, the let newsletter in LinkedIn. Give us support, the likes, and just join almost really, really, really close in the 10,000 people, 9,500 already need it. And we're going to get to 10,000 very soon, I'm pretty sure. So go and subscribe, give us the support to keep those initiatives happen. I think we need to use some of the artificial intelligence to boost our boost our our level of, of the likes and you know just we need to target <laughs> other things so just we can go to the one hundred thousand so that will be the <laughs> so okay. very, very good mention there because today I want to talk about artificial intelligence. Do you know that? <laughs> you look like oh, you prepared this oh, entrance. Oh, right? <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> oh, well, so let's welcome our guests and let's talk about the artificial intelligence in the construction industry. Tommy Cook, welcome to the Bean Cafe. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be a part of it. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. Thanks for being with us and thank you for accepting invites. Uh, let's just tell us everything what you can, but I think Enrique always has the, the proper uh, proper agenda, which we usually do not really keep to the end. But, you know, at least the first page, we need to show it in terms of who you are and what we will be talking today about. <laughs> Exactly. So we prepared this small draft to, to follow the conversation, uh, talking about AI in construction, how you see the future of the AI since you're involved in the in the business, and then some part of the experience of uh, talking in account your role in, uh, in Build Dots and how you guys are implementing the AI, the AI on site. So first of all, we'll go border and then we're going to try to, to put specific cases and, and, and get some some good examples of how the AI can help this really help in the industry. Yeah. So first of all, Tommy, as we always do, we're going to lower the music down, we're going to get a bit serious and we're going to give you all the floor to introduce yourself to our viewers and listeners. So please tell us who you are, what you do and, and why are you here at the Bean Cafe? Of course, yeah. No, thank you, Enrique. I'm, um, my, my name's Tommy Cook. I'm a senior solutions consultant with BuildDots. Um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit about what BuildDots does later on, but um, essentially we are, we are driving AI in the construction industry. Um, my background is in construction. I worked 12 years, 12 years in the construction industry as a project, as a um, as a construction director, um, and was faced with with many of many of the challenges that you know that that, the, that are typical of the industry. Um, many of those can be solved by AI, which is why I'm here today, and I want to uh, I, I want to um, sort of yeah talk about how how AI can make sense of what is a a, a very fragmented and and slightly chaotic industry. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you for the intro, Tommy. So, first warm up questions here. Why did you move, or what did call you to 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 go for the AI AI sector in the industry? Do you think this is the the, the, the real the real medicine that we need, or I, it, precisely that? I think um I think really I, I think from working in the industry, what is what is particularly apparent is is the amount of complexity within it with the lack of control. Um, every project is unique. Uh, every project has a new team to, to coming into it. It's made up of many subcontractors, different businesses working in, working in it. And and the reality is, is there is very very little data captured. There's very little understanding of what is going on in the process. And and as such, it's very difficult to learn lessons from one project to another. I spent like uh, you know I, I mentioned I spent uh, 12 years as a construction director. Throughout every project I did, I probably made the same mistakes on most of them, um, and this is this is something that you don't see in perhaps manufacturing and so on. They learn, you know, they there's such control over what they're doing that that by each you know by each time they're they're sort of you know further down the assembly line, the mistakes would never happen again, and the control becomes very precise. Um, with the construction industry, that that is the opposite, and what we wanted to do. Sorry, sorry, Peter. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I would just already have a question about the data, so go ahead, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. And, and, and I think really when I, when, when I had a, I, I wanted to move into construction technology and I've had um, some experience with different construction technology, but you know, as you put it eloquently there, Enrique, moving the needle in construction 
needs to be something big. It needs to be a, a you know, a, a big change, not, not an adaption of, of current process and, and perhaps trying to understand a bit more. It needs to be a, a, a sort of, I, I think the best way to describe it would be control um, and, and gaining control. Now, because of the fragmentation of the industry, it's very hard to do that with humans. Okay. Uh, I hear what you're saying, Tony, and I think this is, you know, I think we completely aligned on the, on the way how we can transform it. But one thing which struck me, which you said, you know, that's uh, we are capturing a very little part of data during the process. So yeah. when we think about the artificial intelligence, even yeah. if we call it intelligence, it's about the data which you collect and then start to learning about the, the outcome. You know, even we're talking about the GPT, this is, you know, that it goes through the analysis of the pattern and it comes out of the pattern, which already I saw it somewhere. So if we have no data, how we will be able just to make a conclusion out of it? Uh, that, that, well, that, that exa that's exactly the, the point. And uh, to coin a British phrase, it's, you know, you need, you need the tail to wag the dog. Now, um, to understand the, understand the data, we need to capture it well. Um, AI plays its part in capturing data. Um, but typically we have, um, you know, in the UK, we have something called the Building Safety Act coming in, which is putting requirements on construction sites to be able to monitor what they're doing. Um, AI can leverage that monitoring. So we are seeing more cameras going into sites. We're seeing more IoT, you know, uh, sensors in concrete. We're understanding more about the, the perhaps the delivery, but, but really with, with, you know, with, with these different streams of data going into different parts of, you know, perhaps going into different parts of the supply chain, um, we're very good at holding, you know, holding on to the data that's important to, to one particular part. What's never, what we've never really seen in construction is, is sort of um, an overhead look at what is going on in the project itself. It might be the fact that the concrete frame subcontractor knows their curing times through internet, you know, IOT stuff. It, but where does that lead to within, within the productivity of the whole, the whole project? So really, you know, it'd be a, um, it's rather a holistic view, but to be able to capture data from all points and bring it together to understand progress of the, the project is, is, you know, a, a step which we, which, you know, we see as happening um, more and more, but it's a step we should be striving through, striving towards. And not only within a project, but across projects, across industry. Uh, I hear what you're saying, and this is this is one of the things which are also we saw on the industry that you know that's the data capture and the way how the, the we can help it. But one thing which also is is very difficult for us to understand, and we have the discussion with many of our colleagues, clients, etc. Mm -hmm. The construction industry, as you mentioned, is already fragmented. It's it's very fragmented. It's not already it's very fragmented, and the average size of the team is 10 to 15 people in the some of the of the construction even businesses, right? Yeah. So it's very small. Yeah. And we will not be able just to convince them to invest any dollars or any euros or any pounds in anything which will not have the turn out immediate to the return. Small companies, fast return. Uh, I put one one pound, I want to get one pound, yes. one, one pound ten. My God, that's pounds. One pound back is not so bad either. No? One pound for one, one pint. pint. So not putting one pint, you're just putting one pound. <laughs> Uh, and then it's just it's it's really something which I, I really just how, how you will be able just to influence the small mamas and papas uh, construction uh, a bit of construction companies to do this kind of move. You 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 pick up a very very good point, and it's um I, I mean it's not just the small the small construction companies you know you can sell to the biggest com construction company in the world and they'll expect a return on investment. So. Um, it, it's it's about being able to you to use the data to find tangible productivity gains, um, and and that's the key. If they know that they can finish a project quicker, it doesn't matter how big how big the the the, the team is. You know, you can start to put a return on investment case together. Um, also, one thing that that you know AI is is particularly good at is identifying risk. Um, and risk mitigation. It's it's almost like buying yourself an insurance policy. Um, to be able to see things that humans perhaps, um, where, uh, to, to explain it another way, humans have um, the ability to um, quite easily be optimistic, bias, um, put any kind of, you know, subjectivity around what some, something that is objective. Um, mm. this, can, this can have the, uh, just as an impactful a, a effect on a, on, a, on a tiny project as it could on a big project or a small company as it could on a big company. 
Um, everybody, you know, everybody strives towards an outcome certainty. Um, and humans are just not very well inclined. The human psyche is not well inclined to give objective views. Um, this is where computer science is wonderful because it can do the menial tasks that you won't see, you know, that, that take humans a long time, but it gives it in a, in a binary re reply. You know, there's no, there's no context to it. Now, there's, of course, there are plenty of occasions where context is required, um, but, but it, on the whole, it's not so much. So really, to, in order to encourage, you know, the, the sort of filter down effect to these smaller companies, you need to give the rewards um, and there needs to be tangible benefit to doing this. It, you're right. It can't just be, oh, AI is what the industry is doing. Let's spend money and we'll see what happens. Um, it needs to be a sort of a proven business case where you can. Now, okay. we're looking, sorry, can't carry on. No, no. We... no I, I like the two points which you mentioned. So I think, you know, that's that's something which with Enrique, we try just to, to find out. It's also the tangible productivity gains and tangible results. Um, and I can tell you that we failed miserably on the season two. We were not able just to find any dollars uh, coming from the beam implementation, etc. So that's on us. You know, we were not able to do this. But I, I, got, I like it. I like it. I got it. The one thing which you mentioned, I really struggle a little bit because you said that people are biased. AI is biased as well, based on the data which you're collecting, right? So and how you just uh, the all algorithm and how you will just implement the the, the, the the learning phases and the learning uh, learning algorithms yeah. uh, so how you would like just to 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 prevent just to to making the wrong decision you know if if mm. it's you know i don't know how to do this in fact so i just i'm just big open question yeah you you make a very good point and we hear we you know in in the sort of ai part of the, the this this industry we hear a lot of you know Good, good output requires good input. You know, you need to be able to have the data being captured. At source needs to be sound data to make the decisions, to, to, to allow the algorithms to make sense of it and to make decisions off the back of it. So, you know, you make a good point. I think really, in my, in my opinion, that is on the developers to find ways to make sure that that, that data is good. Um, and, you know, there may be, there may be, um, there, there may be sort of, occasions where where you know the the products are, aren't so good um i don't know um but the fact is is i've seen the fact that the vendors who are the, the that are doing this are are giving pretty binary results where the where perhaps the weakness weaknesses can be are perhaps relying on you know perhaps projects themselves to be able to capture this data in a way you know that that, that feeds the system correctly um, so whether it's, you know, if it, if it is putting in sensors, if it's cameras, if it's, you know, it's making sure that those, you know, those, all those areas are captured or they're done consistently enough or, or whatever it may be. And there's a, there's a learning part in that. And again, it's about that. It, it's about getting the reward from it. You need, you know, the, the, you need to be able to trust the decisions that they're making and, if, and, and sorry, to trust the output and make decisions based on the output in order to affect the outcome. And if that, and, and if you're not doing that, you know, essentially you're going, you know, if you're not trusting the system, you're letting you're letting things run. You're letting the AI do its job, but without actually implementing the change. So I think really it's all about finding those, you know, finding that outcome security. Wow. We're going into the very, very interesting part of the, the discussion, which I, I love to have. It's just in terms of the, the trusting the system and trusting the IT making the decision. Uh, so just to, to going with your thoughts, you know, you said on the beginning also, you mentioned that we need just to um, give the dev developers chance to really just prepare it and make it sure that it's there. But developers are the humans. The humans are having the bias. So if they, they will have already the bias on the development part. So mm -hmm. let's think about it, how to use the developers who do not have the bias. Uh, so that's the one. The second, you mentioned as well that um, we need to trust the system, but I fully agree. But from the other side, uh, if you're in the hospital and just right now the AI tells you that, you know, please disconnect all of the, the life-saving equipment because there is a chance that this first pa yeah, patient will die, um, you rather would like to go back to the source of the data and in just to have the audit trial to understand it, why this this computer or whatever, this this machine took this kind of the decision. Yeah. So I think this is something which is still not clear today. We are not able to go back with the audit trials. And again, I'm not talking about the understanding everything, but at least just to have the main, main path of thinking mm. and the data sources. 
Today, I don't see this as the priority for any of these AIs. Just they would like to generate the business and, well, that's it, you know, not the trials, not the yeah. other trials. Now that's a, that again a, good, a, a very good point. What what um what in my in, in the product that I particularly work for, we have been focused on what we call what we call transparent AI, and that and it's exactly to your point to build trust, uh, to build trust within a project team to make decisions based on what an algorithm is telling it. You need to understand how it's come to that decision. You know that 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 recommendation. You cannot just say, like you say, switch off all the machines. But if there were, you know, if there were a reason behind switching off all the machines, like there'll be a power surge or whatever it may be, then then you know you need to know that. You need to know that fact. Now, there are various different ways that that go goes goes about. Our particular our particular product is around progress tracking, and we can show you you know the granularity of the 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 information that goes into that to do that. Now. I think it is a responsibility of the vendors to build that trust themselves and to be able to find ways to build trust in the system because it's too much to expect, like you say, the end user to be able to base what what potentially are very important critical decisions, not 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 like the one that you gave, nothing like as important as that, but but on a construction site, you know, it could be the difference between, you know, overrunning by a few weeks and not. Um, so, you know, these decisions are important and they should be there. They should be interrogatable, I would say. Okay, clear, clear, clear. Very good. Very good defense. I, I like the defense. So that's good. So I'm just I'm sorry for attacking, you know, for, you know, for, for, I know. Please do. I welcome being challenged. <laughs> I welcome it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So that, now for me here, we, we, we come to the point as well, like taking this, um, how do we teach the AI, right? Like how, because at the end, AI is going to be something that's going to make decision by, uh, in, in, in place of humans, but the humans are going to train them. So they will have to part like how do we train them and what, with which data. And also uh, here we face the problem of what is the data in the construction industry? What happened with those thousands of projects we did on the last 10 years? This the data is not there. If it's there, it's not structured. So this is a, a big challenge. So mm -hmm. when if we start to put the the seed the seed day, the starting date to, to feed the, the the AI with the construction data properly, also as of 2023. How are you guys doing it, for example, in your, in your environment <clears throat> to provide the correct data and make sure that it takes not biased decision? They take yeah, that, I mean, that, that's a very that's a, that's a, good, a good, good point. I mean, it, just to pick up on the first part of that, I think there are some amazing solutions out there. Uh, you know, I know a couple of products that are that are analyzing um, past data from projects to identify risk on future projects. So they'll take, you know, m you know, thousands and thousands of schedules or outcomes of projects um, and, and use that big, you know, use that sort of AI analytics to find what are the commonalities between these, you know, these problems and can identify risk. It's a hugely powerful tool to be able to uh, to be able to bring that into into a sort of a current project. But you're right. How, then how do we use you know, how, how do we take data from now and ensure that we're making the best of it in order to, you know, to order to make decisions of current data and also um, feed, leave a data pool with which makes sense for, 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 for future projects moving forward. So we should always rely on the past data. You know, we should always look at that, find commonality, but we shouldn't perhaps build. Yeah, we should look for risk in that. We should look for trends in that. But, you know, that's not going to give us, you know, such... Um, uh, I suppose such definitive, you know, definitive decision-making power as data that you're collecting as you're going along. Um, I think where you know wh where you want to understand is is you want to take you want to take multiple data sources that you're collecting at any one time and be able to find out trends, find find where risks come up. Um, to to you know, I think probably the most um, the most easy way of explaining that for for us is we're we're using uh, we're using photographic imagery. And the AI that we run on that is is twofold. One, there is image recognition, um, which is comparing design um, to comparing design to the reality and saying this is you know this has not been put in the right place or this should have been installed by not by now and it hasn't been. So we bring in program information, but also you can use machine learning as well, which is where you're training you're training the um, the AI to understand what it can see in, in images. 
So, you know, it can identify what, you know, uh, stud work looks like, or it can identify what floor finishes look like. Um, so that's using, you know, data that's collected immediately and offering insight. It can, it can understand it and offer insights straight away. So there's sort of two, twofold, isn't there? There's the historic data that we can, we can run, you know, analysis upon and, and bring out insights. And then there's the data you're collecting at any one time. And you can, you can base decisions off that having AI make sense of different types of, of input streams. That's clear. Uh, so, so what you're saying, you know, is just uh, the one of the, the the first stages will be really just looking at the images. That's that's what you think it will be the the best way to go forward. So, just collecting the images from the construction side, try just to figure out, you know, just comparing it with the with the design and trying to combine it. That's what you think it, the industry will just benefit first from the from the, the, the in the next couple of months. So, so I think that 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 is, you know, that, that that's a reality um, that's happening, and I think that the reason why that's one of the first first sort of ways of doing it is because it doesn't interrupt process too much. You know, mm -hmm. it's to be able to t take images is a, a, on a on a construction site is now expected in large sites and in you know in small sites as well with 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 mobile phones and so on. So if you can if you can get enough, you know, enough imagery from the site that you can use AI to understand what is what is happening, it will it will it will add you know significant benefits to you. Um, it's not limited to images. There's you know and it, it you know like I say there are you know there are sensors there are there are many other ways of collecting collecting data from the current you know the current status of the project and being able to interpret that into decision making power. You know, I think, Tommy, one of the things which I believe, and again, this is a little bit, uh, it's just a little bit different view what I th when I think the AI can help, because, you know, I work a lot with the, with the information technology part of the folks from yeah. the universities, and, and I see how they, how they adopted the, the generative AIs was uh, they were asking to write the code, especially the repetitive code, so just, you know, uh, when you go to the IT guys and you talk to them, right now they're not writing the the very basic stuff where they're supposed to like loops or or the the, the conditions or connectors, etc. They just go to the generative AI. They just yeah. uh, they type it. Please just write for me the A B C D with these conditions, etc. And it generates the uh, the code for them. Of course, you can just put the language whatever you want to do. Yeah. Uh, and when I just take this one, this as an example, I will just take this and move it into the architecture on the beginning. So I would love, love to see like when you're an architect and you're just saying, I would like to have this building A, B, C, D. You're saying, just build me, uh, just put the wall A, B, C, D like this in this yeah. particular way. And then it's just I can learn from all of the buildings which I can see in the, my all architecture databases, and it will just generate the the wall which will be uh, reflected on my design, and I can take it as an object and I can move it into my project. So it can speed up my the, 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 my design process. The same it will be for the for uh, for the the, um, the calculations and for all of the the guys who will just prepare the the the, the, the final design, the final project. But still, I really struggle with the construction. When you really have the concrete, when you have the sand blowing around, and when you have the people just try to put these big blocks of concrete together, mm. wow, I, I really just don't see this part here coming. I don't know, maybe. So just, um, you know, that's potential there. Yeah, but I think if you if you break if we break down each activity to an activity, sort of, you know, a, a particular activity on site, you know, they th there is more there is more sort of um, I suppose you can look at them in those ways to understand the pace of something, to understand halfway through that you won't finish on time rather than towards the end, because the AI has run an algorithm to say that, you know, at this rate, you won't finish at this time. It's about understanding and getting control. I think that's really, you know, really sort of a, a lot of the key. But, but to your point there, you know, I, I, I love that sort of generative AI in, in, in design. I think that's going to start to um, start to flow over into into production or into construction by by modular by you know your kit of you know the ai will understand what is an optimal way to build this building as well so not just taking you know your clients desires as the outcome you know and the site conditions but actually how can we build this in an efficient way you know what resources can we take off site um and you know i think i think again you know something that would perhaps you know take a Take an army to understand can be delivered by algorithms. 
Wow, I like this one, Tommy. This is you, you really you won me over with this one, <laughs> especially with the efficiency of the designing the building to make sure that it's easy to build. You know, yeah. and and I just I try just to look at the parallels in the different industries and and why this is important. Uh, I remember when I was just participating in one of the the the, the lean activities for one of the car manufacturer when we just discovered that they. They create a car just to, to replace the, the replace the, the 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 bulb the lamp in the uh, in the in the first in in the row whatever in the in the uh, for for the to replace the lamp in the in the car they need to have the whole uh, like eight hour cycle just to make sure that they can demount part of it and install it etc cetera, etc cetera. it takes two eight hours to do something very simple which in the other cars takes five minutes. Yeah. And I think when we just do this parallel into the construction building, and if you will just say, hey, you have to, you can design it in the way which the peak clients like it, they, you have the proper, uh, you have the, um, the legal obligations, etc. it will take you three months. But if you will just tune it into this particular model, which will be a little bit different from the construction side, creation side, mm -hmm. it will take two months. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's always years, but... Uh, mm -hmm. It will be just that's something. It's just selling point. I like it. Wow, this is good. Okay. I can give you a I can give you a, a, an ex, an example of that, which is um you know a, a real live example from from a from a project where um we had a uh, we had a a, a blocker a, a point that was holding up the project. Now there was fan coil units and and ductwork being installed on the project. Um, the ductwork they wanted to install and close up the um, and 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 then um, close up the ceilings and the fan core units were being put in. Now the fan core units were delayed um, and they couldn't put the last stretch of ductwork in, and so that meant that they couldn't put up the ceiling because they could, that last stretch of ductwork connected to the fan core units. Now, what we were able to determine with AI um, was the fact that if they got a flexible bit of um, ductwork on the end, which was came at much more of a cost. Um, they would be able to get so far ahead because they could close up enough ceiling that would give them a productivity leap. Now, that sort of thing, you, you, nobody on site really has time to think about and analyze and understand. And also, they, if they can get presented with the results for it in the first place, well, you know, a little bit more expense here is going to save us a huge amount of time there. You know, it's um, it's understand it's getting that control of the project. It's saying where are our bottlenecks and finding practical solutions and making decisions based on, you know, understanding. Perhaps nobody in the in this site would have known that that was a bottleneck without AI being able to understand it. Very nice. I like it. I like it. So this is good. Maybe, Enrique, we need to find the money somewhere there. That's that's OK, because <laughs> that's something we need to go for some of the uh, the contact industry companies uh, just to search for this kind of solutions, just to give it back to the market and just to educate the people about it. Yeah. Because that's something which is which is very tangible and you can just show the examples as, as Tommy, just, he did it just right now. Wow, exactly. good. You, you took me over with all of this right now with this example. So that's great, you know, I like it. Good. It's not happened very, very often yeah, yeah. On, this, on, that, this, on this video. That was about to say, <laughs> you, you, you usually Peter is against our guest. Now he's you guys a team <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, let's carry on a bit with the with the with the flow of the conversation before we jump into the into the next um, other, other topics. I want to ask you briefly here, Tommy, about uh, we talk about the limitation, the current status, image recognition, and so on. But we start to dream a bit about what Peter was saying with the um, with the mm -hmm. lamps and something you you just um, you shared with us. What can be better benefits of the of the future of AI in the construction industry? So. What is yeah. the projection? What things are you guys seeing and almost touching um, in the construction industry? You can say in a few months, Peter was saying before, okay, now image recognition uh, in, the, in the next couple of months. I like this idea of very short yeah. stages because we're talking here about six months of AI development. Seems yeah. like 10 years in, a, in a, any other technology, right? We're going super fast. So yeah. what things can you see, let's say 2024 for the AI in the construction industry that really can change things that now we're not really uh, able mm. to tackle? So, do you know, I, 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 I'm I glad you brought this up. I saw a, um, a, a, a wonderful AI company that, that, that um, works in, in construction technology bringing in what, what Peter just said there. In fact, it's bringing a large language model into project management. So the idea is that, you know, you're using generative AI to type in a question like, I, this is my project. Here is my program. Here is my, you know, here are my designs. What are my biggest risks? 
and it could output and it could also consult with legislation. It could consult with, you know, building regulations. It can consult with all these different data sources and come out and give you give you an output that will say, right, you must, you know, you need to watch out for this. This trips other companies up. This is an important part of legislation, which we've seen people have to do rework based upon. I mean, you know, to have, you know, this sort of almost like virtual assistant to the project is a wonderful concept. Um, I was uh, I was really taken taken aback by the power of this. And this is, you know, we say a few months down the line, this this I saw a, I saw a demo. I mean, it was, um, you know, it's wonderful. So you you, you have to un have to think you know where would we be in six months it's such a long way in ai you know it's it's incredible how fast it develops and and what we can see but i definitely think that there is there is a spot for ai alongside what they call hi human intelligence in construction it's a uh, you know if we were building in a fact in a, in a manufacturing facility yes we could remove the human it, human input but i think the problem the part with construction is whilst we want to automate and control as much as we can we're always subject to an in, in sort of the environment and a, and a new you know a new plot a new design a new whatever so i always see that those two working in harmony um and i think that where where ai is really pushing at the moment is is both that sort of the understanding the knowledge the you know of the construction site which i talked about a lot before but also the user interface to make sure that we can we can you know in engage well with people who are using this on site. Um, we've also, in our industry, we know we've got a slightly aging workforce. We need to encourage people into the industry. We need, we have a shortage of skills. Um, I, I do think this sort of technology is gonna bring about new types of roles in the industry. Um, I think we'll start to see, you know, we'll start to see sort of decisions based on, you know, based far more on certainty rather than on expertise. Um, and I think AI can do that. Um, but, you know, back to Peter's point at the beginning, I think there is a way to go with data collection. You know, I think, you know, imagery can play one part, but there is there is so much, you know, I think there is so much more. I think that, you know, asset tagging from, from you know, the design stage right through to the completion stage will get far more complex. I think we'll, uh, we'll start to see, you know, sensors in almost all materials so we can track the exact process going through and then AI can make, you know, make a big impact on on perhaps the you know the logistics side of things so you know knowing when materials need to be on site so trying to replicate that that sort of just in time type you know um, distribution type thing and also and also get, getting certainty making sure that the right product is you know the right sort of part or the right product whatever it may be is in the right place at the right time if we're able to track that and AI is made, uh, available to optimize that, um, perhaps even, you know, crane, you know, like we look at cranes and we look at plants and stuff like that. I think AI will have a big part to play in optimizing their usage. Um, it will, it will have massive environmental effects. You know, if we know where, you know, what is the, what is the optimal route or what is the optimal way for an excavator to work? Um, I think we'll start to understand far more about that. Um, it's really, really exciting what can happen to the industry, because I think the big thing to learn is that, you know, unlike, you know, unlike many other industries, perhaps with the exception of farming, you know, whereas a long there's there's a there's a big step we can take. And, you know, I think that, you know, not you know, I think that not just AI, there are many, many technology solutions that are going to play their part. But I think the gains will be seen in our industry bigger than they are in any other industry with AI. Totally, because we, we, we have a, a massive gap to fill there, right? Absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Right. And what are other questions? Taking the last, the last sentence here of the paragraph we displayed, the uncertainty that there is some on the initial step when it's coming up, not, some, not a lot of companies, some like your like Bill Dodds here, moving forward with the AI and other companies who also pass through the Bing Cafe and more to come, using the virtual reality or reality capture or so on. But those who doesn't to, uh, really want to jump into the AI for their processes, yeah, because they're afraid of uh, you know like stealing something yeah. new. Let's, let's let's see others fail and then we do it properly, right? Like, I guess they they're thinking about that. What would you tell them? Are they gonna lose a, a competitive advantage uh, by the time they're not uh, using the AI, or are they doing well to wait to the tool to develop? It's gonna be very late if they want to jump into the market within six mm -hmm. months. No, what would you tell to those companies who have yeah. uh, doubts about implementing AI on their processes? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're right. Uh, you're you're asking the wrong person. I, I would say yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but but um, no, I, I I hear your point, and and you can't expect and and you know back to what Peter said at the beginning of the 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 podcast. You know, you can't expect these small SME companies 
just to be adopting high tech solutions in their, you know, in, in their environment. It, it can't happen like that. Um, one thing that I think that is, is getting more uniform is the digitalization of the industry in general. Um, and I think it's where, where you know, AI, AI will sort of fall into the digitalization, you know, much better. So process management is something that we've seen, you know, right down to, to, to the sort of, you know, very small SME companies. You'll see them using, using apps to, to, you know, to, to task their, you know, to, to send tasks to their subcontractors. They're very easily readily available. I think that AI will start to play a part within those apps that are readily available. Um, I think that, you know, streaming that sort of, the, you know, streamlining those processes will become become a part. But I really do think, you know, the responsibility is on the, you know, on the, the first of all, the developers to make the product, you know, sort of more available. But then perhaps, you know, like an example, like in Formula One feeding the automotive industry, we're going to need leaders. We're going to need leaders to take this, take the first steps. And, and you know, those will come from tier one construction companies globally. Who have you know? Who have the foresight and the investment to be able to invest in the future, um, which many of the SMEs will will struggle to do with. It's a competitive market where they you know where they struggle to sort of you know in many cases will struggle year on year. Um, but so you're going to need some of that. A little bit like like BIM, perhaps you know government mandating may help in in areas as well to say look you know you know we know that this will be the future or, or you know. That's my biased opinion. There we go. There's, a, there's some biases coming in there, but I believe that AI, you know, will certainly be, you know, play a significant part in the future. I think what's important though is it's not something we need to be scared of in our in our industry. Um, it's not like we're in an industry. I think where you know robots will take will, robots will take over. Um, I think we're always going to need you know a significant workforce. Um, in you know just in the nature of nature of our industry i think we'll look for automation but i think it will create far more you know i think it will create far more jobs perhaps that we don't know about at the moment mm -hmm. um but yeah i think really to get that trickle down we need to we need to sort of step up from the top down Fantastic. wow no, just um i just when we were just uh, talking i just asked ai just to tell me what are the biggest ai but what about, about the biggest risks in the ai uh, in the aec industry uh, related to ai you know this is this is you know i use the the one of the uh, it's not the chat gpt is one of the other is yeah. the competition of it just uh, and of course they they said that so uh, one of the one of the biggest part and i think we just already talked about it is data quality and availability of data so right. that's one of the thing one things which we haven't talked about it is integration of existing systems which means it really i think it's spot on as well yeah. just that, so i like thank you my ai yeah. <laughs> uh because this is something which really will just have the problems yeah. in terms of uh, it's just again, this is the basic IT problem. So the um, interoperability between the system and data privacy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think that's something with it. And we also spotted about it. We, we talk about the small and big companies. So this is the work, workforce adoption. You know how we will be able just to uh, to to convince the, the the workforce to use some of the skills. And this is what you mentioned about the. Uh, the trusted AI or just responsible AI uh, algorithms. So, so I think this is, we really cover most of it. Uh, one of the things we haven't really talked about it is the security yeah. and uh, uh, it's, it's I, to be honest, I don't care about the privacy in the construction industry. Yeah. I really worried about the security, you know, because we, you know, I'm just, I was born on the, um, all of this, the spy movies, etc. You know, so if I will be able just to ask the AI saying, "Tell me what was the best way to get into the building, A, B, C, D, based on this," and which the security will not be able to cut me. Uh, so um, I'm worried about this one. You know, how we can just avoid this kind of things happening? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think I, I think there's a very very valid question in the fact that you know that data needs to needs to have its own cybersecurity process, and I think that. You know, it's down to the, the the product and the vendors to be able to allow the AI to, to determine which pool of data it's looking at. OK, so that is controllable. Um, people, cybersecurity is is obviously of utmost importance. Now, there's a there's a further question to that as well, is, is that if we want to make real productivity leaps, then data data is better to be shared. And knowledge shared, you know, knowledge shared and, and AI be able to understand the, diff, you know, the the sort of collective 
pool of, of from the collective pool of data um, to make leaps forward. I don't think, you know, I, there are some, there's, you know, in the UK, there's a wonderful, um, the data trust, which is, um, which is campaigning for construction companies to share their data so they can make, make, you know, use AI and different or di all sorts of different tools to be able to find, you know, genuine productivity leaps within the industry. But at the moment, I think people see that fear that you've just highlighted there about, you know, the, the worry of data being being spread about what that means. You know, it's there forever and so on. So so, you know, currently com companies are mandated to ring fence their data um, and it happens, you know, for example, you know, our, our, our algorithms will only ever look at the data from the project they're looking at. Um, you know, it's 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 not like they can they can look at other data. I think data needs to be supplied to the to the algorithms. So, I think so long as we have a responsible attitude towards cybersecurity, I don't see that being being too much of a concern moving forward. Um, but I want to I would like to explore how the commonality of all data can be shared to make the bigger productivity leaps. Yeah, I think Tommy, this is this is kind of a utopian way of thinking. I appreciate what you're saying. You know that if you think about the responsible use of data, there is nothing like this in the world. I'm sorry for that. You know, I apologize for just burning all of your hope on this one. Uh, so, so this is, you know, whenever I can use the data, I can just tell you this: it will be used in the bad and the good way. You know, that one of the examples which one of our guests are just where we were talking about it, it was just a hammer, right? You can use just a brain to just to crash the to to crash somebody's brain, or just you can just use for the work. So, uh, yeah, it's just. Um, so I still don't know how to really do this because we don't see a lot of people running with the hammers on the streets those days. So, so you know, how we will ensure that we will just build something that we will protect ourselves with. You make, of course, we don't have the answer. No? I mean, you make a good point. We have a very, we have, we have that question. We try to answer ourselves at the moment where, where we, we can supply so much data to a construction project that, you know, if the data, if the, if the general contractor is the owner of that data, it would be beneficial to the project to release all the data to the supply chain. However, the supply chain can use that data to be able to claim for, you know, whatever it may be, disputes and extra EOTs and stuff. So, you know, sometimes we see it getting ring fenced. I, I wish I had an answer for you for that because it's a, it's a, it's a valid point and it's something that we, we, you know, we, we do scratch our heads on. We, we like the utopian view. Um, perhaps, perhaps contractually things need to change. That would be a, you know, one thing when we see, when we see CM contracts, a cost plus contract, rather than a fixed price contract, we can see a much more collaborative environment. Um, it might not yeah. be better beneficial for the end user. I don't know, um, you know, but but there are certain decisions that make a cost plus contract available. Then we can show transparency through the project without the risk of, you know, of of sort of you know everybody trying to to protect that very last you know part of margin. So. Yeah, I don't have any answer, but I, I, I know what my utopian view would be. But being a realist, you know, we're a way off. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's good discussion. I like it very much because, you know, one of the one of the key elements of our Beam Cafe and the way how we really just try just to think through how to move this construction industry. OK, it's just it's not about, you know, can we just find a solution today? It's just like. Hey guys, let's move it on. And and one of the small steps like we did today in the way, you know, saying, okay, I can just use this for this particular domain, et cetera. It's really just bring us better. So I, it's make us better. So I think I, I like it very much, the, the approach. Yeah. Utopian, I, I'm worried about the security. I'm worried a lot about it because, you know, I run the, the previously on some some security functions in the in the big company. So I know that that's the, the, the bad things they, <laughs> we're not talking on them a lot but they're they're happening as, as we yeah. speak so valid valid, valid yeah. concerns and uh, if it makes you feel better we are we are very 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 heavily heavily governed by our, our um cyber security partners but uh yeah just don't, don't give me this path because i was also just when i was young i was a hacker so, uh, uh, yeah don't give me this path please just uh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Tommy, so the, let's put a bit in practice everything we told today about the AI, the, talking from the images, and I like this idea a lot of uh, moving forward to the supply chain as a, mm -hmm. as a future or nearest uh, um, yeah. next horizon to, to attack in the construction industry. And mm -hmm. take, a, take us a, a quick tour around how you guys are implementing in build.ots, what you guys are doing, and how are you implementing all this? We talk 
on site. Yeah. So where's the practical side, right? <laughs> yeah, of, of course, of course. Now, but so Build Dots is a is a construction management tool, um, and it has it's, it uses AI as a um, it uses AI to understand what's going on in the images. So we talked a bit about it at the beginning. It's, um, we compare a 360 image to um, to both the BIM model and the program. So we make a 4D BIM environment. So what we what, essentially what we're left with is a digital twin of the building down to every element, plug socket, um, you know, switch, whatever it may be. Um, and we know what should be uh, built in that, that building at any one time. Um, we, we then, we, we can also um, uh, detect any type of errors, um, you know, so if something has been, been built, you know, use this again is using AI as image recognition. If you have in the, in the model, if you have in the geometry of the model, you have a plug socket over here and it's installed over here. But the, uh, the, we can tell you that we can raise those differences. So really what we look to use the, um, the, the control platform for is to get a grasp of everything that's going on site. We, as a, as a you know, construction director, I was always very focused on my critical path. There are thousands of other elements that go on to, to you know, to, that need to be monitored, that need to be progressed. Um, and we just simply do not have the capacity as humans to be able to do that at a large scale. So our tool is implemented on a very on very big project sites, and it gives a great granularity of detail to be able to 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 be able to control and optimize. We find risk and we find opportunity as well, which is one thing that that I really like. By um, it, it, if I take a slight tangent, as one part of the product is we we look for opportunity in both. Like my favorite metric that we've studied uh, um, you, you, from our AI is that uh, is that we utilize very little of the actual construction project when we build. And what I mean by that is depend, depending on what activity has been completed, an area becomes available, but we focus on a particular path and a particular sequence. So if your project does become delayed, there are opportunities in there that we just simply overlook. Um, and AI is able to detect those based on relationships it understands and based on its, uh, its, its sort of, you know, recognition of what's happened in the image and we'll say this area is available for you and it gives and in a practical sense what that does is it gives a site manager or a project leader the ability to say to a subcontractor it's okay for you to bring in 10 more people because look you can work here here and here the ai has detected it and it's showing on the platform and that allows them the confidence to have these conversations where normally in our industry we'll get kickback because the, the sub subcontractor is always going to protect their risk and their risk is having too many people on site who, who are not doing enough. So if you have a, a, a binary product, an AI product telling you there is available work areas, that discussion becomes becomes less of a bottleneck. So that's a sort of very practical reason there. Are, we, ha we, we show sort of, you know, one thing that, you know, back to your point, Peter, with trust in the system, we have, we've learned in the course of our journey, especially over the last few years, that we can't just tell people that, that AI makes their projects better. It's not good enough. You have to show people how it makes their projects better. So what we're doing is we, we've, you know, we've highlighted a certain amount of metrics within our, you know, that our system is able to improve, um, you know, around utilization, around um output consistency um and stuff and 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 also you know we have other 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 different metrics that we monitor but we can actually say you know if we bring this up by 10 percent or this down by 10 percent you you know we have shown the link that that will give you a better outcome so Lovely. It, it's, love it's really it's really affecting then as well on the planning and the management and scheduling of all the all the different tasks right because you you can tell me come on bring 10 minutes more to this room because you can get this work finished i'm pretty sure Many project projects or processes escalated yeah. nearby can also be changed and modified of a, to a higher speed or better productivity. Absolutely, and and you you've you've hit the hit the nail on the head there. If you, when you understand pace of 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 every single area of pro, of of the project, you can make far better decisions. So so really, when when I was working on site, I would only know something was 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 late after it was late. If you know something's going to be late on the, you know, in the first twenty-five percent of that activity, then you can do something about it. Um, yeah. And it's, it's a key key shift, and it's it's something that you need you need to be able to, you know, monitor that level of granularity in a, in, in you know to be able to understand that, you know, because otherwise you just can't, you know, the human mind can't process that something's late until it's too late. Hmm.
And uh, here, here yeah. the pool of data which you are feeding your AI is for yeah. the image recognition, the, the reality capture, or also manual input of telling to the project, okay, this is being done by this time or this way, or just using pure, purely the cameras around and the AI can totally detect and say, okay, this is done like this and like that, yeah. and it's a way of learning. So our, exactly. So our system is, is, is you know, is, is totally, totally um, uh, uh, automated from, from the 360 images. Um, we do have parts of the platform around things like commissioning where you can input manually. Um, it's separated slightly because, um, you know, I think I, I spoke to, to about at the beginning of the pod mostly about objectivity. Um, and when when we start to allow hu a human input into the platform, we we can, you know, I suppose, jeopardize that objectivity slightly. So we separate that slightly more is that's more around compliance or hold points, for example. You know, you don't want to close a wall, uh, close up a ceiling until a commissioning check has been done or whatever. We'll allow that to be to be put into the system. But typically, you know, we like to understand the project based on automation so so that we can get that level of objectivity. Nice. My God, we cover many different topics today, and we just touch. We only just touch. I think we just scrub a little bit the the whole uh, whole potential there. Um, I, I believe that we can also try just to go a little bit deeper into my concerns later. I think one of the you know we can just take a look at in the next uh, next season in terms of the, the the your product, the security, and the way how we can handle it. I, I still, with all of the respect, I still don't know how I can just manage security with the, the data fence, the protection, and try just to learn the algorithms to, to build the right models, right? So this is for me a little bit contradictory, right? Just secure the data only for the projects and then have the full algorithm, which will able to learn themselves from the full data, which is, which is available on the market. Right. Uh, and that's for me, the, the both security concerns and the algorithm concerns. So just, I, I really just try to, to, I think we need to take a look, deeper look in this and try just to figure out what are the smart people in the world that are talking about it. Because um, we already had these issues in the banking industry before yeah. we have this kind of thing. So we will be able to find it. But, you know, uh, it's just some some more smart people are needed. Exactly. Just to, to it. Smarter than me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> smart people, they're the one who come for the bean cafe, Peter. You, you, me, and our guests, those are the smart people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, we will just search for them. It's just, exactly. Okay, good. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Tommy, I don't know if there is something else left for you to say, to share questions to ask. Uh, for me, it's been uh, pretty much all. Uh, so anything else you want to add? Yeah, or great we can start to the, to the wrap, wrapping a song. You know, we'll put the music on the background. Yeah. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. And thank you for challenging challenging me, Peter. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's our job here. It's just, we still... We, you know, I, I really had a big challenge in the season two, which we were not able to find the money in all this construction and everything. Yeah, oh my God, that was horrible, you know, because the objective was find the money and we have not any dollar or any cent. That's so that's, that's what we learned from the. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate being invited. To the Fantastic. So, uh, Tommy, last last look. Thank you so much for bringing us the presentation. Also, what you do, guys, do at Build Dots, talking about AI. And what I get from here is the present is the reality capture. So, querying this with the image recognition and so on to detect the things on site. And also, the future going forward to use all the data to make more impact on the supply chain, planning all the works which are already happening now, but on, on, on bigger terms. We're talking about the cranes and the excavators and, and delivering objects and materials on site. So, I think this is really going to be the months or is some future for the AI development. I, th I think I hope you guys in Dallas also can de develop it. Thank you so much for taking your time coming by. Uh, it's been almost an hour, it's, it, the time flies, and you see we don't really almost follow the structure, but I hope you're happy with uh, with everything we went through. Um, that's all from our side, so thank you so much for being part of the Bean Cafe. Man. Thank you, I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for being with us today, Tommy. It was a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Bye guys, have a good day. Bye guys, have a good day. Thank you.